Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for another editor scripting tutorial as we continue to create our enemy designer tool. Today we're going to be learning how we can manipulate the asset database class to create a dot asset file and a dot prefab file whenever we click our finish and save button. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the code. So we want to start off by defining a few string values. So first off we have prefab path, which is going to, to be the path to the base prefab, which will be dropped uh, into the editor window from here. Then we have new prefab path, which is going to be the path that we're dropping the uh, dot prefab asset in our directory and we're going to want to be dropping these in the assets prefabs and characters directory finally we have a data path which is going to be the dot asset file uh, if you've never worked with scriptable objects uh, then we'll actually take a look at what the dot asset file actually is a little bit later in this tutorial now we need to switch on our data setting if you don't recall the data setting defines whether we're dealing with a mage, a warrior, or a rogue. So we want to switch on that so we know whether we're creating one of those three objects. Okay, now the first thing that we're going to be doing inside of the save character data function within the switch statement is going to be setting the data path based on our settings type. So we want to concatenate. Well, let's go ahead and say what we're doing. So first off, we want to create the .asset file. And the first step to doing that is by defining or concatenating the mage directory to the data path. So we want to say data path plus equals mage slash and we want to make sure that we're naming this file properly. So we're going to pull from the enemy designer window dot mage info dot name. Now remember mage info is a uh, variable which refers to the mage data class. And then we want to continue, continue to concatenate the dot asset extension. Okay, and this is going to be what lets Unity know that we're creating a .asset file. After that, we can call the asset database function, create asset. And we basically need to tell it which asset to create and where it's going to be created. So the asset that we're creating is enemy designer window, window sorry, .mage info, which is a scriptable object which is why we're able to do this. And then the second parameter is the place where we want to store that file, which is data path. Okay, next we want to get the uh, new prefab path. So new prefab path is going to be equal, or we want to concatenate that similarly to how we did with the data path. And again, new prefab path is going to be where the copy of our prefab asset is going to end up. So new 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 prefab path plus equals mage slash and then we want to do similar to what we did earlier. Enemy designer window dot mage info dot name. Only this time the extension will be dot prefab. Now we need to find out exactly where this prefab is. Okay, so asset database dot get asset path is going to actually give us the string value of the location of the prefab that we want to make a copy of. After we have that value, we can actually make a copy of the asset. Now the first parameter here is going to be the old prefab path, 
and the second parameter is going to be the new prefab path. Now after we do that, we are going to do some work on the new prefab. However, the only way we can do that properly is by saving the assets and refreshing the database. So let's make these two function calls. Okay, so the reason that we did this was so that we can actually modify the uh, prefab that we just created, that we just copied with this line. Uh, we saved the assets and called refresh on the database because again, we're, we're, we're gonna be modifying that prefab uh, within the same execution cycle. Otherwise, this would not have been possible because the asset database would not have registered this new asset just yet until the next cycle. So now what we want to do is add a mage component to our new prefab, only if that uh, mage component doesn't already exist on the prefab. So what we're going to do is create a temporary game object variable called mage prefab. Set this equal to game object cast. The function that we're calling is asset database dot load asset at path. Okay, and the first parameter for this function is the prefab path. and what type of object we're actually loading, which is game object. So this line is just going to return the prefab that we just copied right here. Okay, and again, what we wanna do with this is if that mage prefab doesn't have a mage component on it, we want to make sure that we add that to it. So we'll say if not, Mage prefab dot get component mage then we will just say mage prefab dot add component so we're going to add that just like this now that we know that our mage prefab has the mage component we are going to assign the data field based on our uh, based on our mage info variable right here, which is a scriptable object data asset. So the way that we do that is by saying mage prefab dot get component mage dot mage data. Now this isn't going to make any sense if you haven't been following the tutorial. So let me go ahead and show you guys the class that I'm referring to here. Uh, we are currently working in this mage script, which only has a reference to the data. This mage component is going to be what links our physical game object in the game to the data that we're creating right now with this editor tool. So when we say mage uh, mage data, we want to set that equal to what we have created with this editor window tool which is going to be found via designer window dot mage info. Okay, and that should be all we have to do. Let's go back to Unity to see what this actually does for us. Okay, so we only added the functionality for our mage. So let's go up here to click create. Uh, and first what I want to do is give our mage uh, an ice damage type and I'll say that he has a wand Okay, and, and then I'll go to create now if you haven't created a prefab yet go ahead and create one I already created a cube prefab so I'll go ahead and just drag that on the prefab slot I'll give our mage a max health and a max energy I'll set his power and his crit chance and then I'll just give him a name. Let's say we're creating a goblin. And then let's watch what happens when I click finish and save. Okay, so what actually happened was we created the data asset 
and our resources, we dropped it in resources, character data, data, and then mage. And you can see this .asset file here. And all of this is is giving us the information of the asset uh, data that we just created. So that max health, energy, crit and power, the name, the damage type and the weapon type were all things that I just created. And if we go into our prefabs and look at our characters and then mage, we can see we have a garden goblin here, which I just created. It has a mage component on it and a reference to the mage data. So this is very useful, very convenient if we want to iterate over a large variation of different enemies. It's very easy to just uh, create prefabs in this fashion. So what I'm going to do for the rest of this tutorial is uh, go through and add the functionality for the warrior and the rogue. You're welcome to stay and uh, see what that's going to look like. It's mostly going to be copy and paste while I change a few variable names though. Now this actually concludes the tutorial series with regard to the logic. And the next couple tutorials in this series, I'm going to focus on designing this uh, editor window to make it look a lot nicer. So we're going to be talking about custom fonts, custom icons, and uh, custom buttons, things like that. But that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.